Welcome to Work It, a show about work. This is a work of satire containing mature themes. Pour le service en français, appuyez sur le 1. For writer and performer Sam Alamang, please press 2. For writer and performer Janet Moad, please press 3. For a measured and insightful discussion of this option is unavailable. For a comedic look at work-life balance full of dubious advice and raw, unchecked cynicism, please stay on the line. OMG, people, it's Work It Episode 6, where we're talking all about work-life balance. Balance is the word. You're like a tightrope walker without a net, and the crowd is chanting, fall, fall, fall. This show's here just in time for the holidays. Now I've heard this episode, and man, there must be some naughty listeners out there. I beg to broadcast the sound of a lump of coal. No dice. So prepare a balanced number of laughs, because here comes the first sketch. A 2014 study by Harvard Business School found that 94% of working professionals are logging more than 50 hours a week. Luckily, Forbes came to the rescue with a blog post entitled, Six Tips for a Better Work-Life Balance. Throughout this episode, we'll give you handy-dandy examples of how to put these tips into practice. These are Work It Presents, Forbes Presents, Six Tips for a Better Work-Life Balance. Tip 1. Let go of perfectionism. Welcome to Work It Burger, home of the big yuck. May I take your order? I'd like two Work It Burgers, a chicken sammy, three orders of Janet fries, and one big yuck. That's too hard. I'll give you an onion ring. No, it's two Work It Burgers, a chicken... Shut up. Janet, my office, immediately! You worry too much, Mr. Stankman. What you need is work-life balance. Here, pass me that rat trap. I am reluctantly passing you the rat trap. You're in charge now, ready? Mr. Sankman needs a break. Tip two, unplug. Doctor, the patient is stable, but he's going to need a rigorous plan of action to pull through. Tell me, are you familiar with the concept of work-life balance? Well, yes, I am, but please, doctor, focus. I was reading in Forbes that overworked people need to unplug. So what if, instead of that rigorous plan of boring old work, we just... Unplug. But doctor, that's murder. No, it isn't. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, yeah, hey. Boy, do I feel great. Can't wait to tackle this episode, churn out some really sweet sketches. You with me, Sam? Sure, whatever, Janet. I can't help but notice that you seem a little down in the dumps, Sam. Isn't the new initiative working for you? Oh god, not you two. Perhaps we should explain for our listeners at home. Work as benevolent overlords at Widget Media have implemented a new policy to help us maintain a healthy work-life balance. Believe me, there is nothing healthy about this. So here's how it works. Following the example of several other forward-thinking companies, our kind Widget leaders have started to track certain activities to make sure we, their employees, are staying happy and healthy. That's it. Yeah, right. Happy, healthy, and constantly monitored. Yeah, it's really high tech. They do all this through apps and they make our data available to everyone in the company. So for example, uh, hey, would Lexa, show our sleep patterns. Don't you dare. Janet, you're getting a healthy eight hours every night. No coffee for me, thanks. Sam, you slept only three hours. You are in last place. See, this is the problem. So long as I'm doing my job, what business is it of yours, whether I do- Which, Lexa, check on Sam's physical well-being. You see, we're also tracking our exercise and caloric intake and holding a fun intra-office weight loss competition. I'm fine. Sam, you only walked 7,000 steps yesterday. This is your prerogative, and we're not here to judge. But the company average was 10,000. Oh, come on. I'm in perfectly good shape. Well, you'll get to prove it at our next office weigh-in. See, I've started skipping lunch to hit the gym. That's not healthy, Janet. But it pleases our bosses, Sam. What could be healthier than that? Pitting co-workers against each other in competition with real health implications? Boy, someone's grumpy. Widge Lexa, what's wrong with Sam? Constipation alert. Only two bowel movements this week. What? Wow, okay, as your friend, I have to tell you that three bowel movements a week is the bare minimum. That's none of your business. Sure, fine, maybe it's not that. Let's see what else. Alert. 
athlete's foot. Stop it! Oh, right, and management wanted me to have a word with you about your love life. No, 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 no. We have some thoughts on how you can spice things up. No! What's the matter, Sam? Don't you want to maintain a healthy work-life balance? I want my private life and my work life to be separate. That's it. No competitions, no Widgelexa, no sex tips from management. Hmm. Okay? Alert. Thought crimes detected. Please stand by. What's going on? It's for your own good, Sam. Widget Media just wants what's best for their employees. Ah, hello again, guards. Not this again. Don't worry, Sam. Your re-education will make everything right. Even the president needs work-life balance. Good morning, Thomas. They got you posted at the door here, eh? Indeed they do, sir. I don't mind. Assistant to the president. Very impressive. Honestly, it's been a pleasure. Dealing with all the advisors is just so interesting. Discussing world conflict with the military secretary, theater with the culture secretary, or law with yourself. Fantastic. Well, if you'll excuse me, I have some documents for POTUS. Oh, I'm afraid it'll have to wait, sir. The president's on executive time. Right, right. Executive time. Uh, how long is the current block? Uh, let me check the schedule. Executive time, executive time. Lunch, more ET after lunch. Da, da, da. How's next Thursday for you? Say nine? Look alive, people! Morning, Dwight. Sir, good morning, sir! Good morning, Thomas. Now step aside, I've got an urgent matter to discuss with the president. I... Oh, don't tell me. Executive time. Damn it, Thomas, this is urgent. These Germans have re-declared sovereignty. I can slot you in three Thursdays from now. Nine? Morning, Thomas. Time to discuss the culture portfolio with... Oh, no, really? What do you think? This is really absurd. Here's what I can do. I'll bring up the calendar here on my tablet and... Oh, a voice memo. Welcome to the new age. We will conquer the world where the president is on executive time. Ho ho ho. Auf Wiedersehen. Hey folks, I'm the magician the president ordered and... Oh, you're kidding. Executive Executive time. time. So I packed his favorite ribbons for nothing. Well, what's free? This year is filling up. How about next year? What time is good for you? Nine? A spy! Get him! Ach, du lieber! Y'all need a warrant, Dwight? Gosh, being the president must be a lot of work. Oh, hello. Yeah, three buckets of deep-fried turkey parts? Go ahead, he's been expecting you. A typical office on a typical workday. But what's this? Okay, Hewitt, here's what I need you to do. You're going to put in as many hours as it takes to get this report finished. I don't care how tired you are. We don't pay overtime here. It's all about the team. You got it? Uh, okay, boss. A worker in trouble. But who will save her from this demanding boss? Good, you're going to eat here, sleep here, whatever it takes. I don't care if your kid's got a soccer game, your wife leaves you. None of that matters. It's all about the report. Oh, no. This looks like a job for... Stop right there, boss! Who in the heck are you? I'm... No Man! Help me, No Man! I'm powerless to refuse! This can't be! Boss, I have one thing to say to your unfair demands. No! Arg! No Man, you saved me from a weekend of misery! It's all in a healthy eight-hour day's work for... No man. Yes, no man's power to say no is the scourge of unreasonable employers everywhere. Where will no man's next adventure take him? Stay tuned. The new job, Monday. So? So what? Cut it out, Roger. How was your first day at work? It was good. They seem to have a really good culture. You talk to your boss about work-life balance, right? I did, and she totally gets it. I... Oh... Speak of the devil. There's an email from her now. Emailing after hours? That's a big red flag, honey. Don't be silly. Here, look. Hey, Roger. Welcome aboard! Can't wait to have you on the team. P.S. Don't worry, these late night emails won't be a pattern. (laughs) Haha. Told you, nothing to worry about. We'll see. Tuesday. 
Hey, honey, sorry I'm late. Was it your job? No, well, sort of. We're just playing catch-up right now. Roger, we talked about this. You can't let them walk all over you. They won't. We're nearly caught up. Well, come on. I made Mr. Noodle salad. My favorite. Huh, voice memo. Great work today, Roger. Really great. Can't wait to see your revisions in the morning. The morning? They weren't supposed to be due till the afternoon. Why are you grabbing your laptop? You're not doing them now, are you? I can work while we eat. How was your day? Good night, dear. Night. You gonna finish your salad? That's a no. Mmm, crunchy. Wednesday. So I'm really sorry about last night. It's fine. I just really want to make sure we get the time together for things like this. Of course. Date night is important to me, too. I'm glad to hear it. Hope I'm not interrupting. Oh, no. Uh, not at all. Um, honey, this is my new boss. Pleasure to meet you. You know, I'm here on my own. Do you mind if I join you? No, uh, of course not. We don't mind, do we, honey? Great. I've got some mock-ups back at my table. I'll just bring them over. Back in a sec. Great. We can look at mock-ups. During date night. See you at home, Roger. Hope I didn't scare her off. Now, I like the blue version here, but the light blue is nice, too. Thursday. It won't happen again. Better not. I said, ma'am, I really need to stress that work-life balance is important to me. Good. Hey, what are you looking at? Come to the window. That car's been across the street all night. That's probably the Allens' car. I know their car. I haven't seen this one on the block before. Roger, I was just in the neighborhood, saw your lights were on. Be totally quiet. Tell her to leave. She'll leave in a second. I know you're in there. Friday. Are you coming to bed? First, I want you to promise. Absolutely. I'll quit on Monday. You promise? I do. I promise. Your work-life balance is really suffering, honey. It's affecting our relationship. I know, and last night was the last straw. Well, good. Love you, honey. Hate Roger. Welcome back, Roger! Princess Sugar Plum is waiting for you! Ah, the Candy Kingdom dream again! Well, I don't want to keep the princess waiting! Who's your friend? Huh? Hi, Roger! Thought I'd find you here! Tip 3. Exercise and meditate. Hey, check this out! Wow, I've never seen a desk like that! I've been thinking, I need some more work-life balance, so I'm gonna start exercising while I'm at my desk! So you got yourself a stationary bike desk? I didn't know they made those! Stationary? Tip 4. Limit time-wasting activities and people. Morning, Jenkins! Morning, sir! Say, what's that little doodad on your desk? It's an egg timer. See, I'm trying to get a better work-life balance. I just need to limit the things that waste my time. Efficiency, I like it. So let's talk about our targets this quarter. Fantastic. Go ahead. Don't worry, this won't be a waste of time. Mm-hmm. So this quarter, we're aiming to get revenue. Time. Ha, <laughs> but seriously, this quarter, we're aiming to get revenue. Hello. Elon Musk, billionaire CEO of Tesla and SpaceX, and possible supervillain, recently argued that no one ever changed the world by working only 40 hours a week. When asked on Twitter how long his ideal work week was, he said it, quote, varies per person, but about 80 sustained peaking above 100 at times. Many of us scoff at such a notion. Hell, I'm not even awake for 80 hours a week. So surely we can all learn valuable lessons from everyone's favorite megalomaniacal man-child. Let's take a look at how Elon manages to have it all on 80 hours a week. Take relationships. Your time with your romantic partner is limited, so remember, communication is key. Elon showed the power of honesty when he told his wife, quote, I am the alpha in this relationship, and, quote, if you were my employee, I would fire you. Truly, seeing every interaction with your life partner as a high-stakes power struggle is the path to happiness. 
What a charmer. The next trick to having it all, surround yourself with a loyal support network. In Elon's case, his closest friends are his 23 million Twitter followers. And they're the sort of fiercely devoted cult-like worshippers we all need in our lives. When one Twitter commenter suggested that Elon donate to a food bank instead of building more rocket ships, hundreds of enlightened beings piled on to defend their hero from this unthinkable besmirching of his name. Get yourself 23 million friends who will respond to innocuous criticisms with virulent attacks. And when that's not enough, be your own biggest cheerleader. After Elon personally saved the world by sending an unwanted submarine to Thailand to assist with a cave rescue, one of the rescue workers had the gall to describe Elon's intervention as useless. Elon carved out time from his busy schedule to stand up for himself and bravely call this rescuer a quote, pedo. Which leads to Elon's next trick for having it all on 80 hours a week, make time for yourself. Uh-oh, you just made a public commitment to do something time-consuming which earned you loads of praise and admiration. How can you prioritize your me time now? Easy, skip out on your commitments. When reports of injuries in Tesla factories emerged, Elon went straight to the press, pledging to meet personally with every injured worker. The public ate it up, but Elon's true feat of work-life balance came next, when he didn't in fact meet with injured workers. Which would have been impossible considering his workers are constantly getting injured. Brilliant time management skills. A billionaire who has it all needs to have fun. When overworked Tesla employees started to talk about unionizing, Elon nipped that chatter right in the bud with extravagant promises. Why would they want to ruin his fun by unionizing when they too can have it all? And by all, we mean frozen yogurt and roller coasters. And there it is. The haters and doubters out there thought it was impossible to work 80 hours a week and still have it all. But Elon Musk is living proof that they were wrong. Follow Elon's balanced example, and you too can change the world, one union-busting Froyo stand at a time. Welcome back to the adventures of No Man! It looks like another overworked hireling is in trouble! Oh, hi, Mom. Sweetie, listen, I'm coming to visit this weekend. I want to check up on you. We can go see Uncle Merle while I'm there, and I can't wait to spend time with my baby. Look, work's been crazy. I really need a rest. You mean you don't want to see me? This looks like trouble. How could he possibly get out of this situation? Oh, of course I want to see you. It's just... Good. I'm going to take you shopping while I'm there, and we should paint your hideous living room, too. This looks like a job for... <laughs> It's no man. What? Are you having strange men over now? Who is that? Hand over the phone, citizen. Sure. Good evening, ma'am. I have something to say on your son's behalf. What's there to say? I'm coming over this weekend and that's that. No. What? No man, you saved my weekend. Enjoy your restorative break, citizen. And now, Work It presents a lost story of Franz Kafka, a man of balance. On a chill winter day, in a small town near our own, Jacob F. entered the office tower where he would begin his first job. Jacob F. considered himself a man of balance, you see. He esteemed that a life must contain equal parts of work and leisure to be well-lived. As he entered his place of work, an eager and not unattractive young man introduced himself as middle manager Tomas. His suit was large and hung off him, but he had a charming enthusiasm for work that could not but encourage Jacob F. as well. Middle manager Tomas excitedly told Jacob F. how much he'd heard about him. Jacob F. inquired how he was to begin. Middle manager Tomas said, of course, of course, and directed Jacob F. to consult with human resources. Where is it? asked Jacob F. You can't miss it, replied middle manager Tomas, and with that he ducked behind the heavy doors of the boardroom. Jacob F. searched the floor and wove his way among the cubicles for human resources, but the office failed to reveal itself. The day came to an end, and Jacob F. still had had no luck. Putting on his coat to head home, Jacob F. was pleased to see middle manager Tomas approaching him. Heading home after a good day of work, I see, Jacob F. replied. My good man, that was my sincere intent. But in truth, I could not find human resources. Middle manager Tomas was seized by a tragic look. Oh dear, he said. You strike me as a man of balance, Jacob F. And yet here you are preparing to go live your life when you have yet to complete even the simplest task assigned to you. The imbalance is sitting poorly with me as well. But what do you propose? Replied middle manager Tomas. 
I shall stay late, just a little, and put in ample work that I might enjoy ample leisure. Middle manager Tomas's expression was utterly revitalized, and he grasped Jacob F.'s arm and shook it vigorously and amiably. In a moment, middle manager Tomas had departed, and the office was quiet as a mausoleum. I shall find work to do, Jacob F. told himself, and so he began his search for meaningful work around the office. He would search every nook and cranny if he had to. Work-life balance was surely hiding just around the next corner. Hello? Yeah, hey, Rosie Sherman here. Listen, I know it's your day off today, but we got no one to cover for Troy. Can you come in? Ugh. <sighs> Uh, I've already got some pretty important stuff booked today. Listen, I get it. You need to live your life. But you know, I'm going to be thinking about promotion soon. A little team effort could go a long way. Ooh, that sounds good, doesn't it, Rosie? <gasps> what are you? Why are you on my shoulder? I'm the work demon, Rosie. Don't let the name fool you. I'm just here to further your career. But I'm exhausted, demon. I need a day off. Think of the prestige. You could finally get your big raise out of this. Just in time for the holidays. I don't know. Rosie, stop. Think of your mental health. Yeah! Are are you an angel? That's right, my child. I'm the life angel, here to save you from the corrupting influence of the work demon. Saboteur! Rosie, think of all the important tasks you were planning today. Sorting out your taxes, doing the laundry, cooking lots of healthy food to get you through the week. Aw, oh, maybe you're right. I really need this time to get my life in order. Don't listen to her. You want to be stuck with minimum wage forever? Well, I guess I can work just this once, getting the boss's good books. This could be my ticket out of menial labor. Rosie, I beg you. What about that dentist appointment? You know you need to get that checked. Oh no, I really do need those fillings. Oh, I don't know what to do. Uh, Rosie, you still there? Do I choose work or life? Hey, man. What are you? Oh no! Not him! Uh, I'm the lazy fucker ghost, man. Rosie, don't listen to him! Think of your future! So, like, I say screw work and life, man. Why not just smoke a blunt and play Zelda in your underwear all day? Hmm. My child, think of your laundry. Think of your earnings. Sorry, Sherman, I can't make it today. Come on, guys, let's get baked. Tip 5. Change the structure of your life. Williams, I need to talk to you about your whole desk situation. Desk, ma'am? No, no, no. After a full day of hard work, I've reimagined my workstation as a highly secure fort. Well, desk fort. Yes, I can see that. It's called work-life balance. Did you notice the towers? You mean the stacks of post-its? And how about the moat? What moat? Oh, it must have dried up. One sec. Tip six. Start small. Build from there. Janet, I'm trying to write this scene and it's messing with my work-life balance. Well, okay. Let's get to work on a draft. Start smaller. Do you have a premise? We could brainstorm. Smaller. Is your writing software even open? Let's break the story. Uh Uh-uh. Smaller. How much smaller can you get? Atoms, Janet. Atoms. How do you split this thing? Fine. You've obliterated the planet. Can we get to work? And after lunch. the experts. Jeff Bezos, what are your thoughts on work-life balance? The number one thing that people are doing on their iPad right now, if you look at the rankings, they're playing a game called Angry Birds, where you throw birds at pigs and the pigs blow up. How about you, Jamie Dimon? You know what? I'm going to leave the room. You guys stay here for 10 minutes. I'm going to come back. Jack Dorsey, what do you have to say about work-life balance? We put a structure in place recently that uh, really merges product engineering and design so we can increase our shipping cadence and we can really deliver on the five priorities we laid out. Tim Cook, do you want to weigh in on work-life balance? You can't have a back door that's only for the good guys. 
Any backdoor is something that bad guys can exploit. So what do you think, Elizabeth Holmes? This is what happens when you work to change things. And first they think you're crazy, then they fight you, and then all of a sudden you change the world. And um... Sheldon Adelson, what do you think about work-life balance? I don't necessarily want to build a dynasty. So when you think ahead of it, do you think, in three generations from now, my children's children and children, do I really care about them? I don't even know who they are. They don't exist. Zuck, my man, you must have something to say about work-life balance. I, I believe so, and I want to be careful here because our work with the special counsel is confidential. Hello everyone, welcome back to The Andy Show. My next guest needs no introduction. She's the creator of the popular blog Power Mom, author of 71 books, including her latest bestseller Mom's Rules, and proud mother of six kids. Please welcome Missy the Mom! Thank you! Thanks! Hi Andy! Missy, thank you so much for joining us! It's my pleasure, Andy. What a joy to be here. So, Missy, you have a big family, a happy marriage, a successful career. How do you manage it all? For starters, I tell all you moms out there to run a tight ship. Uh Uh-huh. Prepare all meals in advance, carve out lots of time to spend with your kids, quality time with your spouse, and of course, lots of me time. Wow, you make it all sound so easy. Oh, it's a breeze. It's... Honestly, it's still kind of hard to see how you managed to find all this time. Oh, you know, we all cut corners where we can, right, moms? <laughs> Only two of my kids are getting much engagement on social media, so the other four are no longer with us. Yeah, great. I still can't figure out your schedule. I mean, here's an Instagram of you in Australia, and then a picture of you with your two popular kids in Oregon later that day. Oh, well, you know. It's impossible, Missy. It's physically impossible to live your life. How are you doing it? I'm not sure the world is ready to hear my secret. I think we're pretty ready. Right, audience? Well, you asked for it. Behold, my machine. A tremendous feat of engineering by the brilliant minds at Tesla. I step inside, and with the flick of a switch, it creates a precise duplicate of me. Aha, a cloning machine. In a word, yes. Through the magic of technology, I am everywhere at once, raising children, writing books, and chatting with you on daytime television. But I gotta ask, why is the world not overrun with your clones? Oh, it's simple, Andy. Once a duplicate has performed her task, she's disposed of. You mean... Yes. Drawing inspiration from Christopher Nolan's 2006 blockbuster, The Prestige, I drown them in a tank of water and stash them in an abandoned cellar. Top tip, moms. Use blind assistants to help out. They'll never know your secret. You're a monster. Am I, Andy? Or am I the best darn mommy blogger there ever was? Is that the one with Edward Norton? No, idiot. That's the illusionist. Kind of like an Armageddon Deep Impact. Another day, another unreasonable manager throwing their weight around. This project needs to be done in precisely the way I tell you. I don't care if you think it's inefficient or a waste of time. You'll do as I say. Uh, I guess you know best. This looks like a job for... Not so fast, manager. But wait! Oh yes, Mr. Carlton, you absolutely do know best. The other staff don't think so, you know, but I'm always defending you. (laughs) Oh no! It's no man's arch nemesis. Yes, man! Tell me more. Your instructions are always crystal clear and reasonable. (laughs) No man, please help! The brown nosing, it's too powerful! Is this the end of No Man? Tune in next week and find out. Thus concludes Work at Six, but let me leave you with this thought. If it felt like a lot of work to get through this show, you're welcome. You are now entitled to one half hour of life. Work it is part of a healthy, balanced podcast, you know. Now with marshmallows... Finally, in order to live a fully balanced life, make sure to follow us across all social media. We're at WorkitPod on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. Visit WorkitPod.com for more info, and give us a five-star review, that most balanced of ratings. Happy holidays, folks.
Twitter. 933CFMU on Twitter. Follow us for more news on the shows and events you love.